Welcome to True and Unpolished, the podcast, a cusp culture production. Through this podcast, our intention is to uplift, inspire, and amuse. Let's get authentic. Hello. Happy day. It's Lydia here. And Mary. And today, what uh, we've decided to talk about uh, is what is going on in this moment uh, in our country, this moment of kind of seeming divisiveness that's been lasting for a while. And I'm going to start by telling you what, what I did. Uh, so last week, after the events at the Capitol, I um, was angry and I was sad, super, super sad. Uh, and the next day, it, so in my neighborhood, there are still political signs everywhere. And I dropped my kids off the next morning. I dropped my kids off at school and I went to our town office and I said, I am here because I want to inquire as to why nothing is being done about these political signs that are still in yards. And the administrator explained to me that yes, in fact, uh, the ordinance is, uh, the ordinance requires that signs, political signs be taken down the day after an election and they give a 10 day grace period. And I think we can all agree that that is well and truly passed. And she said, yes, ma'am. And we do not have the staff to drive up and down the streets and, you know, take down addresses. And I said, well, I have an hour and a notebook. So I'll do that. <laughs> So I drove street by street by street, writing down all of the addresses that had these political signs in them and uh, have turned them over to um, the town administrator. And, you know, now there's this whole thing. In fact, there's an, an email in my inbox and I have not looked at it, but I just saw that it came through just before we began this. And it includes, a, you know, a letter attached. Uh, they're showing us the letter that the legal department for the for the town I live in came up with to send to these folks. So um, that's what I did, and I did it. So do you want to know why I did it, Mary? <laughs> yes, that was what I was thinking. Why did you do it? Why did I do that? I did it because I believed that the political signs went from being annoying to after the events of the Capitol to being um, provocative and or aggressive uh, in nature, you know, their very existence. Uh, and, um, you know, I mean, you can literally like see neighbors arguing via sign across streets from one another. Okay. And you mean they're, they had an opposing? Yes political viewpoint and you can see it okay yes and it's kind of like I'm not taking mine down I'm not taking mine down and so and I think go ahead you have a question oh I was just um because I I'm trying to understand visually what it looks like um so I think that's important um, to have a better picture so how many um how many addresses did you write down and how big is the area um, okay, so I'm not good at the area question. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, me I either. Read, but <laughs> seems I, seems husband, important. <laughs> <laughs> if my husband was here, he would be able to tell you probably down to centimeters um, the area. But I do not know. I don't honestly. I don't know a foot from a yard. <laughs> How many blocks though? Would you? Oh gosh, I don't know. Like, what's technically a block? I always get confused by that. <laughs> from one street to another. A, 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 um. um Okay. Like a neighborhood block would be. Oh my gosh. Lots of blocks then. I mean, there's a lot of blocks. Um, like 10, 20. More. More okay. than that. I mean, it's I uh, I don't want to give, I, I, honestly, <laughs> I'd rather not say where I live because maybe, you know. <laughs> so, uh, so well, no, I don't think you have to do that to, um, to give an idea but, but if we said 20 word. 20 square blocks but then i don't know mary okay, okay. hold on I, I it will become clear okay i okay. wrote down i wrote down 
um, I think it was 24 houses. Um, and I did not go through everything. I gave up at a certain point. Okay. Like, okay. I'm done. Um, and some of these are just little bitty yard signs, right? Still right. political nature. Some of them are yard sign, multiple yard signs, flags, banners posted on the tops of people's homes. Oh, I forgot to write that one down. Anyway, okay, sorry. I just thought of another one. <laughs> so, I mean, one of them, I'm not kidding you, looks like the headquarters of, of one of the parties, um, like looks like one of the party's headquarters, like I, that, right. that, like you could see it from space. Right. Okay. okay. So, <laughs> and I'm just saying, I'm just saying. That just gives you an idea. Yeah. It gives us an idea of. That's right. Yeah. And to me, yes. Yeah, so, so um, I feel, I felt very strongly that these needed to. Um, yeah. Why out. did you do it? What? So, okay. I'm going to be honest. I did it at first because I was angry um, about what happened and I felt disempowered. And instead of feeling helpless and depressed, I reached upward and I reached up for anger and anger mm -hmm. helped me to become more empowered and reaching up for that is not the problem. It's if you get stuck there, that's the problem. And, you know, taking action there, um, is a problem. So it kind of seems like, and why this is coming up, why we're talking about it, it seems like a lot of us are stuck there, right. stuck in a place of anger. And so, um, I, to me, it sounds like, and I want to hear more about why, but to me, it sounds like it was an effective thing for you to do, but maybe part of what I would like to talk about is how do we move up the ladder to a better feeling emotion? Because I agree. A lot of us are stuck at the anger place. And how do we resolve a conflict if both sides of the argument are stuck in anger? Right. But so, go ahead and tell us more about why you did it. Um, I will. Uh, and I want to say that I did. I definitely reached. Uh, so and I gave a talk um, yesterday and it was reaching up from anger to mm -hmm. understanding to peace and and that I think that's um so so Where, yes I think that's really yeah. important to talk about um I did it um uh, at first because I was angry and I wanted to feel empowered in some way and then um you know before I sent the email with the you know with the list of houses I got instead of angry I was frustrated right and mm -hmm. before I actually press send uh on them I was at a place of just acceptance, just sheer acceptance. There was no, you know, I wasn't, um, you know, I hadn't gotten to hope yet. I hadn't gotten past that, but I was at acceptance. And in the rule that Eckhart Tolle talks about and that I try to live by is that you do nothing unless you're in acceptance, enjoyment, or enthusiasm. Uh, because anything outside of that, you're creating from the ego. And then that so when you went to the city office, yes. you were not in acceptance. No, you I was were, not. You were not in acceptance acceptance enjoyment or enthusiasm um thank you for asking that question because I would have said no but as I'm sitting here I remember that you were husband, enthusiastic maybe for my, it might have been because being see, my a, husband, a voice of change yeah, yeah my husband said to me I, I think it was hope it was about I'm I have hope that we can all unify right like that we can all let, put this stuff behind us and move forward together you know uh, mm -hmm. you know and find some unity um but and and I my, so my husband when I told him what I was going to do he said <laughs> which is so funny he said do you promise you'll be nice <laughs> <laughs> and I said yes I promise I'll be nice and it was a good reminder to me and you know I I endeavor to be a pretty nice person. I mean, it's kind of comical right. because I, you know, I try to embody kindness, but you know, like everybody else, I don't sometimes. You're and human too. That's, I am. Newsflash, tweet, tweet, hashtag. <laughs> I, at Lydia is human. Uh, so I, I, so I, he, he, him saying that, 
I knew was my guidance to, to look at my energy before I walked in there. Right. Um, so I would say that when I was in there, but, but I went back to anger because this is what's happening. I'm driving down the street, right? Mm-hmm. And everyone, I can feel this kind of righteousness almost right that keeps wanting to come up and what Eckhart Tolle says in a new earth is he said the thing that nothing strengthens the ego more than being right right let me explain to you I was filled with my rightness as I was driving around yeah I had um one of my old supervisors who I but it heads with a lot she said something like that to me one day she said do you want to be right or do you want to be effective (laughs) and I was I was like "Mm." I mean that's a question I ask um clients a lot do you want to be right or do you want to be effective I think it's a good interesting yeah the boss that you butted heads with asked that question to you and you were open enough you could sense that it was a powerful question and you then used it well I I wasn't open when it was said to me It sounds like that would only come up in a situation where you might not be open. But yeah, after, after, I mean, I, but I heard it. I mean, it's not, obviously, I think that's when a shift in consciousness occurs. I mean, very often we're angry and closed off. Right. Right. And then Mm -hmm. there's somebody that's brave enough to confront us. I think you and I do that with each other in a, in a a more gentle sort of way. So I also think this person was someone that um, was, uh, there was intention behind our relationship. And I grew a lot because of that relationship, even though I didn't really enjoy it a lot of the time. Yeah. So I wasn't open, but then it um, forced me to shift. Okay. So here is what I'll say too. This is what I talked about yesterday. Um, Because I really feel like this is a time where, ego so here's the thing there is no such thing as my ego and your ego in the sense of the ego that I'm talking about I am talking about yes I am talking about the egoic pattern that is active in each one of us to varying degrees at any moment in time and um what I so I'm I'm referring back to a new earth right now a lot because I want to be I want to remind myself, what does the ego pattern look like so that I am am alert to it, alert to its presence in me uh, as as we navigate this very tricky moment uh, together. And one of the parts that I read, which was so helpful, it talks about the diminishment of the ego and how the way, um, one of the fastest ways to diminish the ego is when you are um, being criticized or blamed or someone is calling you names, if in that moment you can resist the urge to defend, to explain, to to lash out, or even just defend yourself, if you can, what happens is that naturally you're going to start to feel like you're shrinking, like you're getting smaller, right? You're going to feel like, you know, the ego has been threatened, the ego in you has been threatened, and you will feel this kind of shrinking begin to happen, and it, won't, and it won't feel comfortable, it'll feel uncomfortable, but if you can stay with it, if you can just watch it, what right. happens is right on the other side of that, you expand, and you, because the real you, the real powerful, true you, your essence, your presence, the love that you are, then rises up in this large way. So not Mm -hmm. only have you not been diminished, which is what the ego tells you, is that you're being diminished here, right? Not only are you not being diminished, you are in fact just on the cusp of experiencing the expanded version of you. So it's like um, a little tiny flame of light. Mm -hmm um maybe with in a room where there's not very much oxygen (laughs) he goes like yeah um your ego is like covering up the light but Um, if you can let that I don't know blowing air into it blowing oxygen into that area mm -hmm. then your light kind of gets bigger and um 
I don't know. I was just trying to kind of you're come getting, up with a, a metaphor. Vis- yeah. Well, visual. Yeah. Visual. You know why it came to me that to say that is because you were talking about the story with your boss, your ex supervisor. And Mm -hmm. in that moment, when she gave you that question, if, and when, when he says, get quiet, not just, you know, not just like verbally quiet, you know, not just quiet Mm -hmm. externally, but quiet internally. Like if we can not defend internally, if we can really just sit and become alert to it, then you know, the diminishing is actually happening, but the diminishing that's happening, the shrinking that's happening is your ego. And the ego is the, the con, the con, the mental construct of me, not who I really am. It isn't the thought of who I am. It is who I am. And it cannot, you know, it, so, so that, but when that diminishes, what that means is, mm, well, I'm thinking about that little song, this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine. Like I'm thinking, I don't know why, but a light. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, you know, it's the the. I'm not gonna hide it. So if I put a cloth over it, a fabric over it, that's then, the I, yeah, that's my ego. Okay. And so it, that's a better metaphor. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Better. I'm telling you now because I was not yeah. the flame in the oxygen. <laughs> I'm sure it's there. I just I'm not. Um, but the uncovering of it is what you're talking about. So my fear makes me want to hide it. But if I use that fabric to hide it, then it goes away. Yeah. So um, so I think what you're talking about is the painful it is painful I think it's painful to let your ego fall away oh yeah it is um but but at the same time that's what makes your brightness Mm -hmm. able to sort of shine and the reason why it's painful is because you believe it's you you know you we mistake it for who we are you know uh and Eckhart talks really well about like uh if you look at the a child and when they um, when they begin to understand my toy and they'll say mine, mine, mine. And then you take it away and they scream like you cut their arm off. The reason why that happens is because they have, they have now identified with the toy. And so the toy is not just a toy. It's me. It's a part of me. So when you take it away, you are taking away a part of what they now see as their identity. And that construct of me, my, most of the time when we use that, we're talking about that mental construct, um, you know, the story of who we are. I am so-and-so. I was born here in this country on this day, in this state. I went to this school. I married this person. All of that is the story of who I am, not who I am. Who I am is, is in this moment beyond a thought. I can't, you can't think yourself. You can experience it though. So, so you did this thing. I did this thing. Mm-hmm. I did. And then you were angry. You transcended your anger. Well, did it shift? You said, then you moved to a place of peace. And that was what your talk was on. Yeah. Because I moved into a place of acceptance because yeah. I recognized, oh, I'm angry because I think they are wrong. And when I recognized that what I was looking at was the egoic pattern, making choices and decisions and the egoic pattern isn't theirs, it's ours. And I had the egoic pattern active in me too, right? So it's just like me, just like me. I mean, I I think, um, and I think this is a really hard thing to talk about because, mm-hmm. you know, I, I mean, I go with my background in art therapy and dream work. Um, you know, I like, um, I think one of the things that is important in dream work is what we say is you never say, uh, if I, if I were interpreting Lydia's dream, I would never say, Lydia, this is what your dream means for you. Right. Because, 
in anything as far as the dream world is concerned and dream interpretation, what we are wanting to do is own every single statement that comes out of my mouth. That's my interpretation of Lydia's dream. So I'm not trying to tell Lydia what is right for her and what her dream means for her, but I'm willing to share my own projection of it so that so that she might benefit too. Um, and so, I, you know, but I think this is really difficult because if there's things that people are speaking out against, like violence and violence, you know, yeah. things that are, you know, they're morally opposed to on a very visceral level, That's right. you know, it's hard to say, well, you know, you have to own your stuff too. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But, but I think for me, um, what, what I know is true for me is I have to own my stuff in my life, you know, and, and I have to show up and be kind to the people that are in front of me and loving to the people that are in front of me. Um, I think some people have, a, a um, you know, like in that moment, you had the inspiration and the call to go and, um, show up at the city office and, and, you know, say what you thought needed, you know, what needed to happen or whatever. Um, but, I, but I guess my musing is how do we balance that, you know, and stay centered in yeah. owning my own stuff. Right. Um, and for me, I, ha I like any time I move out of that, um, then I, I shift into a righteous place and I always, I always feel bad about it afterward. So, um, so here's the thing. And that I talked about this very thing. Uh, so, um, there, there is a quote by Edmund Burke, um, and it, he was a philosopher who lived a long time ago. And he said, the only thing necessary for evil to flourish is for good men to do nothing. I do right. not believe in evil. I believe there is consciousness and unconsciousness, and there are degrees to both. There are degrees to consciousness and unconsciousness. And I am, have adapted that quote because I believe it is very true right now. And that is that the only thing needed for unconsciousness to flourish right now is for conscious people to do nothing. And um, I believe that, and this is a shift within me, you know, really over the last couple of years. Uh, I think that the spiritual community um, that I identify with as being a part of um, I mean, that's my job. My role has the word spiritual in it. Uh, and I believe that there is a tendency um, specifically in this country for spiritual people to opt out of un, mm, to issues they'd rather not talk about, you know, to, um, to divisive issues. Um, and uh, and politics is one of the, but those, but I don't think what's going on right now has anything to do with politics, actually. Um, but I, you know, and even though it's, you know, headlined as well, being, that is the, that is the surface. Right, right. Surface. So I believe that action is necessary. I believe what I, what I talked to everybody about yesterday was I said, I think that we have, we have a call and that is to number one, do nothing, which means to get really quiet and to ask what is mine to do. Number two, do something. Whatever that something is, go do it. And then to do nothing again at any moment while you're doing that something where you sense that egoic pattern arising in you. So you have, we can't just not do it because we know that our ego will get tripped, right? Like we have to participate and be alert enough that when that egoic pattern arises, okay, now I'll pause. I'll take a pause in the action, but I will then rejoin the action. Does that well, make I like the pause because I think, um, I mean, for me, I have, my inspiration has been to be silent, to be still. Um, for the most part, I have had moments of inspiration where I felt like I needed to do something externally. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, um, I think it's important to, to, for, for me, for, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I think sometimes being still, I mean, still and quiet, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and you know prayer using prayer as a tool um those are important aspects of 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 what we're talking about too yeah i agree and i also and i'll say this represents a shift in me i i did not feel before i would have i would have said that always you know um you know don't watch the news i stopped watching the news for a really long time and i do not believe that it is possible to watch the news regularly for any length of time and remain conscious right. however I think that I'm at a point where I'm coming back to the middle. So instead of never watching, it's about participating, watching my consciousness when the egoic pattern arises, taking a pause and a step away, and then rejoining again, not staying out of the game because I'm worried about the darkness within me, right? This quote yeah, unquote I, I think I think you and I are talking about two different things though. Yeah. And this is um, actually, and I like, I like what you're saying because, um, what you're talking about is avoidance of the issue, right? So what I'm talking about is that my, my spirit, my consciousness is telling me to be quiet. Yeah. yeah. They are, those are, so your consciousness is saying, okay, I need to act in this moment. And then in the next moment, it might be to, you know, withdraw, mm -hmm. but it's being conscious about the moment. Yes. Yes. Not necessarily. Totally. So one person may be inspired to speak up and mm -hmm. one person may be inspired to be silent. Yes. But what to me is important is about listening to that inspiration and following the inspiration and yes. also removing ourselves when we're not in an emotional place where we can be effective. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. Yes. Well, we solved the world's problems today here on <laughs> True and Unpolished, everybody. There you go. So no need to fuss or worry any longer. We just gave you the answers. Hashtag write that down. <laughs> see what happens next. That's right. <laughs> well, I should let it stop there because you said it. Hold on. Let me say this. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Uh, you can find us on uh, Spotify and Amazon Music and Pandora and anywhere you get your podcast. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss an episode. And Mary, what did you say? Let's see what happens next.